I have with me Kyle Kalinske. He is a progressive talk show host on Secular Talk on YouTube and Blog Talk Radio. He's also the co-founder of the Jester's Democrats. And um, I, uh, he's an interesting guy. Kyle, thank you for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me, Jesse. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving to you as well. So the first thing I want to clear up is that I hear that you have wanted to debate me at Politicon and that you thought I had refused it. But are you clear that I didn't know anything about it at all until all this came out and my staff didn't know anything about it? We had no idea about it at all. Uh, is that clear with you now? Oh, yes, 100 percent. In fact, when I floated your name among all the names I floated, I was most convinced that you would not say no. Right. And so when I heard from Politicon that you did, I was frankly floored. I said, that's that's very weird. So when I got that question at Politicon um, where somebody basically told me, well, you know, why don't you debate Jesse? I mean, I had to tell everybody that I floated it and I heard back that you said no. But <laughs> having said that, I 100 percent believe you. Uh, you're not the type of person to back out of a debate or a right. discussion or anything like that. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad that's cleared up. Who was that little beta guy that gave you a hand smack up on the stage there when, when that was said? That's Marcos Melitsis. Uh, beta! The, he's, the, he's the founder of the Daily Coast. Oh, uh, uh, no wonder. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Kyle, I, re I read that you are a, an atheist. Is that true? Yes. A and Why? Uh, I don't think there's any evidence for the existence of God. And when did you start to think that way? Have you always thought that? Mm, I don't know. I think that I just was, I, I didn't think about the question or care about the question for a long time. Um, and then, I don't know, probably in my teens, I came to the conclusion that there is no God. And that was after looking into it and reading Christopher Hitchens and uh, Richard Dawkins, among others. Amazing. And were you raised by <laughs> were you raised by your father and mother? Yes. And were they Christians? Or are they my Christian? mom? My mom is a Catholic, and my father was pretty much non-religious. Oh, I see. And at one point, were you Catholic? Um, I was raised in the faith, but I don't know if I ever actually believed any of it. Oh, I see. Uh, where do you get your? If you don't believe there is a God, where do you get your values from? Logic, reason, basic, basic empathy, um, trying to be universal in my principles. So I try to abide by the golden rule, which is something that we can come to the conclusion of without needing to invoke a magical sky wizard. Amazing. And so you started the YouTube channel on uh, Secular Talk, the, the channel Secular Talk. What was the purpose of starting that? Um, I was interested not only in God and religion, but also in politics. So Secular Talk was just a name I came up with for me to, you know, turn on a webcam and start ranting. And um, it stuck. And, you know, I've been I've had that channel since 2008. I did it, um, you know, just as a hobby for a while. And then in 2012 was when I decided to try to do it full time. And that's pretty much when it took off. You um so just for the record, you don't believe there is a God. So I would guess that you don't believe that there is a hell either, right? Or Satan. Correct. No. And so what that's it's an amazing thing. What do you do uh, when you are, are lonely or by yourself or you feel like life is not worth a dime? How do you deal with that? Well, I I'm I'm fortunate enough that I've never felt like life isn't worth it. But whenever you go through a moment of, you know, sadness or depression or something happens where you lose somebody close to you or things of that nature. And I did. I lost my father uh, in 2011. And I, I, you know, I was born in 1988, so I was pretty young at the time. Yeah. Uh, when something like that happens, you know, you take it on the chin. Uh, you take it like a man you, you, and you get through it and you deal with your emotions. And, you know, you got to understand that everybody's human. Everybody has emotions. Everybody has feelings. Everybody has ups and downs in their lives. And uh, that's not an excuse to try to, you know, believe in jiggly puff in space. 
Do you believe that is normal to be an emotional person? Um, yeah, I think that uh, some people are emotional. Some people aren't emotional. Um, but I think everybody in the course of their lives will go through uh, phases of feeling either sadness or depression and happiness. So we're we're complicated, Jesse. We're human beings are complicated, and there's a you know a range of uh, different things that you'll go through in your life. What is the purpose of being an emotional person? It doesn't serve any good. What is the purpose of that? Um, well, I think uh, emotion is just kind of a, a, a natural thing in the same way that happiness is a natural thing. There's an awesome quote I love that says, basically, happiness is never stopping to think if you are. And <laughs> I, think that, I think that kind of encapsulates uh, sadness, too, and, and other uh, emotions. It's just if we could, you know, if we could, if we had the magic formula, we would never have to deal with those feelings as humans. But we're all human, so we all have to deal with it. And some people are more emotional than others. And um, again, I think it's just a range of things that all different people go through. Um, it is abnormal to be a happy person or a sad person. And people who are experiencing those emotions are in a fallen state. They have fallen away from um, God because when you are a son or daughter of God, you have peace, not happiness. And peace is like ever everlasting and never mind what situation that you're going through. Happiness is based on your environment, based on what you're going through, what you have or don't have, or the people in your life or not in your life. But when you have peace, none of those things matter because only God can give you peace. What do you think of that? I don't think you're necessarily wrong, but I don't think it's a hard rule. Like, I get the point you're trying to make. You're saying that people who believe in God uh, potentially are, uh, they have more stable uh, feelings and emotions, and there's not necessarily these peaks and valleys. Um, not I think at all. Many, I think that many people who are uh, religious, I think you're right. I think many people do feel a, a lot more stable. Um but to me, it really comes down to what is true and what is false. All I care about is what what's the objective approach to that situation and what's the actual answer. Um, and I also think, again, it's not a hard, fast rule. While I take your point, I think that it certainly is possible for somebody to be, um, you know, a, a non-believer and at the same time have relatively stable emotions and be on, you know, one end of the spectrum when it comes to ups and downs that they feel in their life. Um, for a person, a man or woman that does not uh, believe in God and have faith in him and his son or daughter, they have no, uh, no peace at all, and their lives are, <laughs> are not stable at all. And, I think I have some peace, Jesse. I mean, I'm, But you can't uh, have it because peace only comes from God. But I think I know how I feel better than you do. But I guarantee you, you have no peace if you don't believe that there is a God. You can't. You can't guarantee that. You're not in my head. I am in my head. <laughs> the, the fact <laughs> that a weird time to start debating, Jesse. <laughs> the fact that you are an emotional person uh, says to anyone who is a son or daughter of God that you have no peace. Now, you may have happiness up and down, but you have no peace. I want to ask, um, you, would you consider yourself a liberal um, I mean, yeah, that's one word you could use for me. I, I prefer, um, you know, social democratic or uh, populist left is another phrase I like or just leftist. I mean, I, I broadly take the label liberal, but I just don't I, I don't necessarily use that label. Right. And do you realize that is that normal for a man to be a liberal or socialist or secular that that's abnormal for a man. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir, I don't agree with that. Yeah, it's absolutely true. Men who are liberals are females. They have a female mentality, <laughs> female emotions. So if you believe in a social safety net, that's a feminine thing. If you think that uh, we, we should have a society where when people are at their lowest, that uh, there's a helping hand there for them and that they can get the bare minimums for, to keep life going. You think that that's a feminine thing or is it that is. just an empathetic and logical thing? It's a feminist, a feminine thing because there are times when you shouldn't help a person like that. But if you're into your emotions, you will help them and it will be bad for them, not necessarily good. But if you are a logical person, as a man should be, then you will see when to help and not to help. And it wouldn't be based on what you think or feel. What do you think about that? 
I disagree. So what if somebody, uh, for example, is going bankrupt because of their medical bills uh, and because they don't have insurance and they can't afford it? What should society do? A good question. Let me take a break and I'll respond to that. Don't let me forget. I when, will not. When I come back, I'll respond to that. All right, Amazing. 888-7753. Back in a moment. Talking to Kyle Kalinske, a progressive talk show host on secular talk. So, Kyle, restate the question for me. Sure. So um, what if somebody is going bankrupt because of medical bills, because they couldn't afford the premium and they're a hardworking person, but, uh, you know, they're faced with the choice of either go bankrupt or don't afford their treatment and henceforth they would pass away. Do you think society should lend them a helping hand? If that's a, you know, it's a working class person who has been, as you said, doing the right thing, then we should help to a certain extent. And then they have to get on their own because when you have situations like that in your life, it was something that you missed that you didn't see happening in your life, right? You were, mm. you were not paying attention. And so as a result, that opportunity is like a wake-up call for you. So we should also allow them the opportunity to see what they are missing in their lives. And that way they don't become addicted to someone else taking care of them, as the most black people have done. So do you blame people for their physical ailments if somebody gets cancer or something and they're in that situation? Is uh, it because they miss something in their lives? That could be possible, yes. Absolutely. Ooh, okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, what about if somebody works full time and they don't make enough money to survive? Should society step in and make sure that they can make ends meet or no? What do you mean they don't make enough money to survive? It, they... So it's a category. It's a category called the working poor. We have tens of millions of them in the U.S. where people work a full time job, but they don't make enough money to survive. Do you think that society should step in? No. And, uh, Absolutely no, no okay. because mm -hmm. that doesn't make any sense. If they're working full time. They right. need it to, makes no sense. <laughs> they they need to check themselves because maybe they're overspending. Maybe they're getting things that they don't need. You know, it's well, it, it's impossible to have a full time job and not be able to make it in life. Unfortunately, that's, that's not true. That's a, those on. people. A lot of people are uh, overspending. They they go, they go beyond their budget. Well, and if you so, work at Walmart, or, you make minimum or they can you don't get us money to survive. That's not true. Not it true, true at all. No, no, no. No, it is true. That That's person, why you need, to, you need to go to the social safety net because they don't pay you enough to live. No, they are not paying attention to how they're spending their money. They're not managing. Ah, okay. They're probably uh, uh, secular people and their, their lives right. are out of control. But let me ask, uh, you disagree <laughs> with me. That, <laughs> you disagree with me that racism doesn't exist. I said that racism doesn't exist. And you disagree with that. Why? First of all, do exists. you disagree with that? I do. And uh, I think there's plenty of evidence that racism exists. I don't think it's as bad as it was in the 1960s. It wasn't. It, it, it didn't exist in the 1960s either. So it, it never existed? Never existed. And so, so where is your proof that it exists? Well, for, let me just ask you, was the Klan racist, the Ku Klux Klan or no? At some point, they became evil but not racist. They were no different than Louis Farrakhan, Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, and uh, the uh, Democratic Party, Black Lives Matter. <laughs> but if racism is thinking that uh, your race is superior and other races are inferior, then why wouldn't the Klan also be racist? Because that was in their ideology. The ideology is w white people are superior to all other races. And that's what racist, you believe that's racist to think that way? To, to believe that uh, a race is objectively superior to other races, yes, I do believe that's the definition so of race. most blacks or many blacks believe that their race is superior to whites. Are they racist? Of course, yeah. And so Louis Farrakhan is a racist? I don't know enough about Louis Farrakhan to answer that question. Yes, but you I do, do know, know that, you you know that he hates Jews and he thinks that blacks are superior to Jews and whites, I, right? I do. What I do know about him is that he does hate Jews. So yes, I'd call him an anti-Semite. Now, perfectly fine in calling him that. And would that make him a racist? Um, sure. Yeah, if he thinks that uh, you know black people are objectively superior to Jews or whatever, sure. Or to that, white. that means he's a racist. He believes that they're superior to whites. So is he a racist? Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. so if that's what he believes. Yes. So a person belief is what makes them racist, in your opinion? Yes, the belief that uh, a race is superior and other races are inferior is the definition of racism. And by that logic, 
racism absolutely exists. You just gave one example right there. You think Louis Farrakhan is racist, which is weird because no, you said before I don't you think, don't think racism exists. I don't think Louis Farrakhan is racist. Louis Farrakhan oh, okay. is evil, just like Black Lives Matter. Um, Black Lives Matter was uh, founded by a bunch of black lesbians and black homosexuals and social justice warriors, white godless social justice warriors. And Black Lives Matter are uh, worse than the KKK. Do you agree? What's the body count? What's Do the you, body count? How many people have Black Lives Matter killed versus how many have the KKK killed? By encouraging killing cops, they have caused, in my opinion, the the lives of thousands of people. Oh, because, thousands of people. Remember, okay. Where they can went, I find that? Is that, a, is that a study that was done by uh, Columbia or something? Remember when they went out chanting, <laughs> what do we want, dead cops? When do we want it now? I do. Uh, I remember that. Uh, Peanuts in the blanket. Uh, mm -hmm. from like bacon. Remember, yep. remember the Ferguson effect? After they did all that, blacks went out and started killing. Uh, would you put Black Lives Matter in the same category as the KKK? No, not even close. Do you believe that white people are racist? No, I think it depends on the individual white person in question. Have you ever met a white racist person? Of course, yeah. And what made that person racist in your mind, other than thinking he's superior? Because all fallen state people believe that they're superior to someone else. That's what the ego is all about in yeah, that fallen state. You, I don't know why you struggle with acknowledging that racism is, is something that exists. I know you're trying to say it's you're rolling it into evil. So you're saying racism is just evil. I agree that racism is evil, but, but there it is, is no also racism. a useful category on its own. No. Uh, our battle is a spiritual battle. It's a warfare between good and evil. You either serve good or you serve evil. And it's a spiritual thing, not a physical battle. Yeah, but, but when you, you don't believe from there a tree is a, because they're a different color than you, that's racism. They didn't hang them from the tree because they thought they were a different they color. There was never a lynching? <laughs> yes, uh, they did it because they hated blacks. Not because they were black. They had judged them for some reason. And so it had nothing to do with the color itself. So Emmett Till wasn't hung because he was a young black boy who whistled at a white girl? No, they, he was, they did it because he uh, whistled at a white girl. They had judged black people. And they didn't want to miss, was, they didn't want to miss guy, the race. Would they, have done that? would they have done it if it was a white kid? No. Right. So Probably that's, not. The race was the operative factor. No, but because they don't hate, they don't hate their own race. Well, they do, they just don't realize it, but they hate the blacks because they think they're better than the blacks. It's a judgment, and it's not based on color. I got to ask you this. Uh, my biblical question is this week, how do you see black people? How do you see black people? I don't see black people as a, a monolithic group. I see them as individuals like I see everybody else. And how do you see them? At it would, it would depend on the black person. Give me a black person, and I'll tell you the answer. <laughs> Give me your impression of blacks as a whole. I don't have one in the same way I don't have a feeling about white people as a whole. And there's white don't... people who are in prison and who are the scum of the earth, and there's white people who are wonderful scientists who are making the world a better place. Why do you think that um, most black people are Democrats? If you notice, uh, they supported a secular... Um, insane person like Barack Obama, who is anti-God, <laughs> anti-white, anti-Jew, anti-everything that's good. And most blacks voted for him twice. Is that a normal state of being for a group of people to do that? So I think it was perfectly rational for, and the statistics, of course, bear out what you're saying, that they've, uh, the overwhelming majority of black people voted for Barack Obama and voted for Democrats, uh, because there was a political realignment in the 1960s where all the openly racist people decided to join the Republican Party. And, of course, the Democrats became the party of all colors, all races. And that's why they've been voting for the Democrats ever since the 1960s. Well, why haven't they gotten better? They have only gotten worse as a result of voting for Democrats rather than better. Hold that I don't thought. agree with that. Hold that thought. When I come back, I'll let you respond to that. Back in a moment. I want to get back to Kyle Kalinske, progressive talk show host on Secular Talk. Uh, on YouTube and Blog Talk Radio. He's also the co-founder of the Justice Democrats. What does that mean? W what do you do with that? So I'll answer that in just a second, but I want to uh, answer the question that we were pondering just before the break. 
Um, you asked me about uh, the statistics showing black people overwhelmingly voting for Democrats. Yes. You obviously don't think that's a good thing. Right. Um, I think there's a perfectly logical reason for that. First of all, in uh, 1958, before the war on poverty, which was waged by Democrats, 17.3 percent of the country uh, lived in poverty. And then in 1973, after the programs had taken effect, that dropped all the way to 11.1 percent. Uh, you have that plus the Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act, the fact that, you know, Lyndon Johnson famously said as he signed these leg- these pieces of legislation, uh, we're going to lose the uh, the Democrats or excuse me. Yeah, the Democrats are going to lose the South for a generation because he knew that all the white racists, that there would be a political realignment and the white racists would go to the Republican Party. So that's exactly what happened. And that's why you see the statistics overwhelming that uh, black people vote for Democrats. But that's not why Lyndon B. Johnson said that. Lyndon B. Johnson said that because they had uh, they started to give black people free stuff. They told them that (laughs) the government is going to give you welfare, but you can't have a man in the home and in return destroying the family. And Lyndon B. Johnson said that we're going to keep these inwards on the plantation of the Democratic Party for 200 years because he knew once the Democratic Party destroyed the family and uh, became the daddy of uh, black people and the so-called black leadership, the race hustlers became the thinkers for black folks, that black people were going to hell in a handbasket. I grew was MLK up on, one of those or not? I grew up on a plantation down in Alabama. I was born there. I grew up there. I grew up under the Jim Crow laws. And black people were better off then than they are today because they got married. Less than 10% of black children were born out of wetlock. Black people worked for themselves. They did not rely on the government. They did not hate white people. They didn't blame white people. And most black people were Republicans up until... The so-called civil rights movement started, uh, and so Would, once did you the, say MLK once, is a race hustler. Once the uh, civil rights movement started, and blacks became addicted to the democratic plantation, it's just been hell for them. So let me ask: You believe that? And, and just to answer your question about Dr. King, um, I disagree with Dr. King when he went along with signing that agreement that the government will become the daddy of black people. But so most, of, agreement? most of the stuff started after he was uh, assassinated. Uh, Dr. King never got along with Jesse Jackson and others in the movement because they had a hidden agenda. But I want to ask you, you believe blacks are better off uh, within the Democratic Party as opposed to the Re- Republican Party? Am I right? Uh, I believe that as a general rule, left-wing politicians are better, not just for black people, but for everybody than right-wing politicians. Okay, so um, black women who were born in America, they're American citizens, they were born here, 77% of their children are born out of wetlock, generation after generation. Is that a good thing? Because the government is taking care of them, the Democrat the Democratic Party take care, you know, the government take care of them. Is that a good thing for blacks? No, I, I wouldn't say that that's a good thing, but okay, I also okay. don't buy your premise when you say that it was like a rule that the Democratic Party said you it can't is, have a man in the home. That is, that is, that is a is, rule. That, that, that was absolutely that, is that written in law? That was, is that written in law? I don't know what the situation is today if it's still written, but oh, at that okay. time it was. Oh, they put it in law I know, no in the home? Listen to me. I I'll know listen. black people who... When the social worker would come around once a month, however, however often they came, if they had a man, the man would have to leave the house and the woman would have to pretend that she had no man in order to receive free stuff from the government. And, and so time has passed. And now these women know that the government is going to take care of them. So they are having babies and their children are having babies knowing that the government would take care of them. And that's a fact and not a made up thing. So assuming that so all is of that, that is good, true. Is that good for black people? No, but assuming that all of that is true, why wouldn't the answer be to increase wages and incentivize people to get jobs by having jobs that pay a living wage, as opposed to right now they don't pay a living wage. So sometimes people are incentivized to go to the social safety net instead. I cannot so believe saying- I cannot believe that you'll come back on that. Uh, it makes perfect sense. No, so you should believe that it. <laughs> is insane. 
You're a nice man, but wages that's insane. To incentivize people to work, that's insane. That that's not what the Democrats do. The Republicans of offer they do. that. The Democrats are for minimum wage laws. The Republicans are no, against it. How many? That's the wrong way to do it. Back in a moment. Hold on. So my final statement with Kyle. And good morning, YouTube Live. I appreciate you guys and ladies. Kyle, if black people were to get married and fathers and mothers raise their children by being a good example, would we have black-on-black violence in Chicago that we see in around the country in urban areas? Would blacks be better off? First of all, I think that violence is tied to the drug war. Second of all, how do you legislate that? No, answer that question. Would blacks be better off? That is my answer. Would blacks be better <laughs> off if they had good fathers and mothers raising them, being a good example, providing? Would we have the black on black violence that we see in Chicago and other areas around the country? I think everybody is better off when you have a loving family. OK, but my question is, how do you legislate that? What are you going to pass a law that mandates people stay together or get married in the first place? Because that is giant government. And I know that you're somebody who doesn't like big government. So, Kyle, my question is, would blacks be better off? And I answered it. <laughs> uh, would we still have the black on black violence in Chicago and other urban areas if black men and women got married and by example raised their children? Can you give me a yes or no on that? I did. I gave you a much more thoughtful answer than a yes or I didn't no. Ask I, for a, I, I didn't ask for a thoughtful one. Off. Excuse me. Excuse I didn't me. ask I think, about everybody. I'm only asking about blacks. I think everybody, including I, black people, I'm are not better asking off with a about, family. I'm not asking about everybody. I'm only asking about blacks. Give me a quick yes or no. Would blacks, will we still have the black on black violence in, in the manner that we have it now if black men and women got married and by example, be a good example and raise their children. Would we have the black on black violence around the country? You would because that's tied to the drug war. Amazing. And so you're saying that's that right. it is amazing. <laughs> you're saying that uh, if black men and women got married and raised their children in the right way to go, that. that they would still be on drugs. And so they would still need a drug war or whatever is happening. How, Would how blacks still that? be on drugs like that if they had good parents? I answered your question. Now you answer mine. How no, do you legislate people stay together? Th that's not an issue. You can't. You shouldn't. So my question is, huh? are you saying so that are, we talking about it? <laughs> are you saying that blacks would still be on drugs in the manner that they are if they had good parents? I don't know how to legislate having good parents, number one. Number I'm not, two, that's that not the question. still exists because it's tied to the drug war. When you make drugs illegal, there's a black market for drugs, and then there's violence tied to that black market. So the bigger problem, Jesse, is the drug war. I'm not, I'm not in the business of chastising black people if, for anything. Okay? If, I'm and why here to not? talk about how to fix these and problems. Why not? I don't know how to fix it through marriage or legislating that they stay together or whatever kind of kooky idea you're implicating. Uh, do you love black people? I love all people. How about blacks? Yes. And so why aren't you in the business of chastising them when they're wrong? Um, because, again, I don't view them as a monolith. I view them as individuals. So if an individual black person is wrong about something, I will offer a helping hand and try but, to explain where I think they're wrong. But, but you, would not offer the, you would not offer the group a helping hand. I offer individuals a helping hand. How again, about the been, group? If you saw a group of black people in trouble, would you offer them a helping hand? If a group of black individuals, yes. How yes, about a group of black people? Would you offer them a helping hand? Yes, but my idea of helping them is different than yours. You want to yell at them for not having, you know, coming from a loving family, whereas I don't understand how we could fix that. I'm here to fix the problems we can fix, and that means ending the drug war. You fix it by stop taking care of them. No more freebies. Require that they be responsible is, is for themselves. Freebies? Is health care freebies or no? Yeah, now it is. So, so they no sort of fall in Messiah. Let me ask this, because we run out of time. Uh, Barbara Lee, you wish that uh, Barbara Lee could become speaker as opposed to Nancy Pelosi. Why, yes. Is that true? Why yes. Barbara Lee? Because she was the only voice standing up against the Iraq and Afghanistan war at a time where everybody else but she's wanted a, to go to war. She's a loser. No, she's right about stuff. No, she's a <laughs> loser. <laughs> she's, uh, she's amazing in her foresight. No, she's not. She's an evil, nasty 
loser. But let me ask well, you this. Are you for the big, beautiful wall going up around the border? No. I think it's silly and it wouldn't accomplish anything. Does it bother you that when these illegal aliens come into the country, they end up in the excuse me, they end up in the urban areas first and foremost, and so black people are impacted in a negative way when it comes to jobs and health care, uh, employment, housing, and crime. Does that bother you that the illegals that are coming in are affecting blacks first and foremost? Um, it bothers me that employment situations can be impacted by that, which is why I believe in a strong having a strong process in place whereby we evaluate people's uh, claims to being a refugee, if they're looking for asylum or if they're an undocumented immigrant. I do support a process by which we determine uh, whether or not we give them citizenship. So you are bothered that blacks are hurt, uh, uh, impacted in a negative way, first and foremost, by the illegal aliens. That bothers you? I'm bothered uh, by any time employment you're, is undercut you're by not cheap answering labor. The question again. I am answering the question. I'm Jesse, asking you. See, here's the thing. I'm, I'm asking, a are you being, bothered? So I give you wrong answers. Um, are you bothered that black people are affected negatively, first and foremost, by illegals coming into the country? I'm bothered by cheap labor undercutting American labor, which is why I support a process by which you determine who should be here and who shouldn't be here. So you're not going to answer that. My, that is a direct answer. <laughs> my final question. What is a man? Oh, this is a good one. Uh, it's an adult human male. <laughs> so a male is a man? An adult human male. Yeah, that's the definition of That's a textbook definition of a man. An Amazing. adult human male. Uh, what is love? Um, love is when you care about somebody or something more than you care about yourself. Amazing. Kyle, it's been fun. Thank you for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me, Jesse. I appreciate it. We're going to have to do this again. Yeah, absolutely. We didn't even get into Trump. I wanted to talk about Trump with you. I know. We got to have you back. I want to get to the great white hope. Do you agree that he is the great white hope? No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming on, man. All right. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right.